Hi everyone. So in today's video we're going to be talking about the BMW iDrive system. Now we're going to be using my car. It's a 2017 4 Series. It's a pre-facelifted January 2017 model and it has the 4.0 generation of BMW's iDrive system. Now my car in particular has the upgraded professional 8.8 inch screen. So in today's video I really just kind of want to give you guys a tutorial about the iDrive system. I suppose this video will be most useful for anybody thinking about buying their first BMW and they want to have a good idea of how the iDrive system works. So the first thing I want to address is just the main controls down here in the center. So you got your main wheel here which you're going to use for most of your work. So you can scroll it left and right, you can also click it left and right, up and down and then you can press down on it to make a selection. Around it, you have all of your shortcut buttons. So you got back, option. This here is the radio and media control, communication for your phone, the menu button, the map, and the satellite navigation. So in this video, I'm going to put each of these six tiles on their own timestamp. So if you want to fast forward to, let's say, some information about the navigation system, you can just do it through the timestamps. So we're gonna set up the camera and take a look. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with is the media and radio. So we just click in here and it allows you to go to all of your uh, radio stations, FM and AM. And I believe this here is the digital stations as well. Let me just check here. I think it's digital stations anyway. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Music collection, if you have any music saved or imported onto the car's hard drive system. You can access your auxiliary jack and USB from here. So I have music on my USB loaded up in here. I can just cycle through it. And also there's different ways of searching as well. You can go through the artists, tracks, shuffle your music. Good bit of customization there. And then if you have your phone connected and you have music on your phone, which I don't, but you can access the music there and play it if you wish. Uh, your CD player, your sound adjustments, all the usual things you would expect to find in there. You can also do a factory reset as well. Uh, manage mobile devices. So you can just connect a new device there. You can go through your own phone. So all these different settings that I have on. I can also disconnect my phone or delete it altogether if I wish. And then just your general Bluetooth settings in here as well. So you can just turn it on and off as you wish if you like personalized menu so you can turn off and on some features so let's just say I want to turn off auxiliary and music collection I'm going to go back as you can see they no longer display up here in this menu and so if I just go back into the menu I can reactivate them so that there is effectively the media or sorry the media and radio part of the iDrive system. It is very basic and easy to use. All the things you would expect to find regarding regarding radio stations and music and so on can be found through there. So next, we're going to go into communication. So this here is your phone. Basically, you can connect it through the Bluetooth system through here. You can access all of your contacts in this uh, first selection here. Uh, I'm going to skip over recent calls because that does display people's phone numbers, so we're not going to look at that. Dial number. Now you can insert the number by selecting it from here, or you can use the touchpad. Now the first thing I'm just going to say about the touchpad, is I suppose it's a nice little feature to have in the car. Personally, I wouldn't use it that much. Um, I find it to be much easier and more convenient to just cycle through the numbers this way especially when you're driving and you have to use the iDrive system to either punch in a phone number or set a satellite navigation destination when you're driving personally i would not want to be using the touchpad for doing that and also if you can use the voice command system for commands like that you're better off doing that as well uh, and here you can manage your mobile devices so we touched on this in the radio and media portion of the video just a moment ago bmw assistance so service partner so effectively what this is is you can decide which your preferred bmw dealership is so if i go into service partner and click next martin riley motors is the closest bmw dealer to me so it's just under 20 miles away in sligo now if you go onto your relevant uh, bmw website you can get all of your information regarding bmw's roadside assistance and customer support and so on from there uh, but effectively if you have any issues with your car 
What BMW can do in a nutshell is they can access the iDrive system in your car and they can address any kind of problems or issues that you're having. So that's really what the BMW Assistance uh, side of things is all about. Uh, messages, a lot of this is to do with the BMW apps on the phone, which as I said before, I will cover in a separate video. But yeah, I suppose it kind of goes through your, your history as well. So these are things I would have entered from the BMW app, as you can see there, sent from my BMW app. And all of that kind of information just comes up through here. And again, another personalized menu like we saw on the uh, radio and media selection. Uh, you can have a personalized menu and I think the vast majority of menus in the iDrive system. So you can just add and remove certain menus. So next we're going to take a look at navigation. Now this is where things sometimes get a little confusing. Even I still make mistakes on this, but in your address input, you can insert an address by simply saying it using the touchpad, which as I said before, I don't normally recommend or by simply just uh, scrolling in the letters using the wheel here. And as you can see, you do get a voice command uh, setting. So you can enter your country, your uh, let's see, city, town or postcode street number, house number, and uh, road junction. And then you can enter your address here. So you can do a quick search. You can insert your own home address if you like. You can just set it up through there. You can also go to your recent destinations, address input, points of interest, which is actually quite good. So you can do a keyword search or you can search by categories. So car, entertainment, hotels and restaurants, which you can't visit anymore these days places of interest and so on. And if you want to be very specific, you got things like petrol stations, restaurants, parking, parks and rides, so like fun fairs and that kind of thing. Uh, contacts, well, let me see, uh, John McQ, which is where I bought my car, John McQ car sales, you know, I would have his uh, information in here. So as you can see, the navigation wants to take me directly to John McQ car sales, but we're actually going to cancel the route guidance on that. So we have to go up here, root guidance, and stop root guidance. And finally, you have your GPS coordinates, your latitude and longitude. So if you get lost, I guess you could send them to somebody. <laughs> I'm not sure. So for the next part of the video, we are now going to look at number four here. So connected drive. Now, again, this here is all to do with the BMW apps on the phone which i am going to touch on in that video but to give you a little brief overview bmw messages which we already saw in one of the last menus there and bmw assistance bmw connected as you can see this is all labeled under the smartphone app so we're not going to dive too much into this in this video but you do have a handy little calendar here which i suppose is always nice to have vehicle apps again bmw information and you can personalize that menu so we're going to kind of gloss over this one briefly and um, I think we'll stick to keeping that in a separate video okay so my vehicle now you got a lot of different menus here so I'm gonna go over these as quickly as I can but I'll still give you as much information as I can from each menu so in here we're going to take a look at the lights so interior lighting so you got two different selections here you got classic which gives off an amber glow and sport which gives off a white glow and then you got your brightness for that the exterior lighting so your turn signals as soon as you uh, touch the turn signal just once if you just tap it it will either flash the indicators once or three times which is what i have it set to and your welcome lights if you decide to turn them on you can adjust how long you want them to stay on for then after that you have your doors and key so comfort entry if you double press the uh, unlock button your side windows will roll down as you're approaching the vehicle basically uh, your relock uh, that there is if you unlock the vehicle and you don't open any of the doors after about a minute or maybe a few seconds the doors will automatically relock themselves lock when the car is driving away and you can flash the turn signals when you lock and unlock the vehicle so very basic stuff there Speed warning, I have mine set to 65 miles per hour. So the fastest you can go on the main roads in Ireland are usually around 62. So I just set 65 for myself. 
Now, if the car is sitting stationary like it is now and you select the current speed, it will default to four miles per hour. But let's say if I'm out and I'm driving 32 miles per hour and I was to select this um, option here, it would set my speed warning to 32 miles per hour. Your driving modes, so we got Sport and Eco Pro. Now, if like me, you have the Adaptive M Sport suspension in your car, you'll be able to adjust the chassis. But if you don't have the Adaptive M Sport suspension, it's only the drivetrain that you can customize. And then you can configure your Eco Pro mode. Now, I don't often drive in Eco Pro, but I believe what the tip means is when you get to that particular uh, speed there, of course, you can adjust that. It will, I suppose, give some information on how you could probably drive the car more economically. And then you got your auxiliary ventilation. So I have the car sitting stationary at the moment and it's telling me that the function is not currently available. Uh, this is something I'm gonna save for the uh, video on the BMW apps, because it is something that you can control from there. And finally, here is the vehicle tracking. Again, this is part of the BMW apps. Next, we have the iDrive settings. So you can go through your mobile devices. You can adjust the language, the touchpad, right map search fields as i said i don't normally use the touchpad but everything is activated there anyway you got your displays so you can control the displays here you got your brightness of the screen at night the screen saver so i have it set to after 30 seconds but you can also choose 60 seconds or two minutes or just turn it off altogether if you wish instrument cluster a lot to look at here but basically all of this data here that displays on your instrument cluster you can have it on or off whichever you prefer all to do with how you want your vehicle set up uh, time and date you know fairly self-explanatory stuff there uh, units so I just have mine set up like this here with mpg distance reads and miles power reads and horsepower my torque figures tire pressure and the temperature Sounds we looked at this in the radio media, but again, you can find it all through here. Notifications so you can sort them by date or priority. We're actually going to be looking at notifications in a moment, that's the last menu. Shows things like missed calls and BMW messages. Pop ups driving experience control. When this option is selected, the drive mode is displayed when the button is pressed. So I got my drive modes down here for Sport, Sport Plus, Comfort and Eco Pro. So it means when I select one of them, it displays up on my screen here. Software updates, so my current version of this, telephone and media, and that also gives the uh, last few digits of the VIN number. You can update your software, which you do on BMW's website with a USB stick. And I can also restore to the factory software getting started that there is selecting your languages which language would you like to use so you got a few choices there mine's obviously set to english uk data privacy i have vehicle check or vehicle tracking activated again this is to do with the bmw app speech recognition and you can also delete all of your personal data from the vehicle if you wish oh sorry we'll go back in here Driver profiles, you can also customize your own profile. So I have my own selected there and you can import and export all of this uh, information from a USB stick. And let's say you could put it onto another BMW 4 Series or maybe you can put it on different models of BMW as well. And you got your guests and different driver profiles as well. Uh, I have this selected to off, show driver profiles at start. So as soon as you turn on the vehicle, this screen here basically shows up, but mine is going to default to just Shane. Vehicle status, and let me see. So you can check things like your tire pressure monitoring. You can also go to your engine oil, tells you everything is okay there. Everything highlights in green, which is what we want. No faults. Thankfully, service requirements. So it just tells me the state of my engine oil, brake fluids, vehicle check, brake pads. It even gives me mileage as well. So I have 7,000 miles left on the front brake pads and 6,000 on the rear brake pads. And my engine oil would need to be changed within the next 11,000 miles or it also gives an approximate date as well. 
uh, teleservices call again this is something you want to look at on BMW's website but again we touched on it earlier you can select your preferred dealer so what do we have after this technology in action this is kind of fun so sports displays I got my horsepower and torque I rev the car it adjusts in real time to tell me how much horsepower and torque I'm using at any given time efficient dynamics so tells me for example that the engine is running and also here you can look at your different stats between sport comfort and eco pro modes what else do we have here driving information so I got my onboard trip computer so I can reset my fuel consumption and speed if I wish by simply clicking into or sorry clicking into it uh, back you got your trip computer again you can do a full reset on that you can do it either manually up here or you can do it automatically so I have it set to automatic and the owner's handbook again pretty self-explanatory stuff here you can uh, access this through the BMW apps but also of course you've got the old-fashioned uh, physical handbook which I keep in the boot of the car you can go through everything you want here you can even do a picture search if you like so displays a lot of things here around the vehicle uh, keyword search and you got animations as well here so I'm going to talk more about this actually in the next video and then the last menu here is notifications very simply if the car needs to notify you of anything let's say maybe you're losing pressure on one of your tires you'll get notifications displaying up here about that it just tells you kind of any relevant information you need to know and there's also a thing in the BMW app where you can send a note to the car if you want to remind yourself of something which is pretty handy so that is basically all of the six tiles here now i probably went through this video rather quickly but that's just because there is an awful lot of information and in all of this stuff here especially in the my vehicle and navigation portions of the video now if you press the menu button here this brings up all of your history so this here is all of the parts of the iDrive system that I went into so if I want to shortcut back to anything here let's just say the address input in the navigation it will do that for you and this here is just my screen saver that comes on after 30 seconds so it gives you like an analog style clock with the date below as well so guys that is everything I wanted to show you on uh, the BMW iDrive system I just want to make a little note here before we wrap up this video. The first generation of BMW's iDrive system, which I originally used in an E65 series for the first time, that was a very complicated system. It was, it had had an awful lot of menus in it. A lot of people didn't like it and it did receive quite a bit of criticism. Over the years though, BMW's iDrive system has improved considerably. Now, as I said, this here is generation 4.0 that is in my particular car. It is a great system, don't get me wrong. There is a lot of menus and everything is very well laid out. You've got all your shortcut controls here. The displays on the screen are very nice. There is a lot of learning in it, especially if you're not somebody that's very up to date with the technology in cars. And as I said at the beginning of this video, especially if this is your first BMW, there is a lot of learning um, that needs to be done for BMW's iDrive system. But if you know the basic things, like going through your radio and how to set up your radio stations, you got all your preset buttons there. You just hold down a button to preset your preferred station, for example. You can do that from there. If you can figure that out and the navigation then you're doing pretty all right because i suppose the navigation and the radio are going to be the main features that you will use in your iDrive system everything else after that is very in-depth so setting up driver profiles and that sort of thing it's probably not something everybody would do but with a bit of time and patience you can learn bmw's iDrive system as i said it has improved quite a lot from the first generation so in my next video, I'm going to be going through the BMW Drive apps or applications for the phone, as I mentioned a few times in this video, because they showed up in a lot of these menus. You can adjust and use a lot of the functions in the iDrive system by using the BMW apps, which are free to download. So I'll see you guys in the next video. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions regarding the iDrive system, maybe any uh, features that I missed in this video, please leave them in the description box below and I'll do my best to answer your questions and help out in any way I can. Thanks for watching everybody.